Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and Apple recently announced that over the next two years, they are going to be moving away from using Intel CPUs and AMD GPUs in their Mac computers and exclusively using their own custom ARM chips that they make called Apple Silicon. Today, I want to talk with you about what this means for video editors and share with you three reasons why this is such a big deal. No matter whether you use Final Cut, Premiere Pro, or DaVinci Resolve, or any other video editing software, if you edit video on a Mac, this is going to affect you, so you need to be aware of what's going on. Let's start with the first reason why Apple Silicon is such a big deal, performance. With the iPhone and iPad, Apple has been responsible for designing the CPU and GPU inside all the way back since the iPhone 4. These chips have gotten consistently faster and more power efficient every year, with the latest iPad processor rivaling the same power as Intel's higher-end processors. But with the MacBook, iMac, Mac Pro, all the Macs, Apple has been exclusively using Intel CPUs. This means that Apple doesn't have control over that hardware, and while they probably ideally want to be releasing newer and faster processors every year, like on the iPad and iPhone, they can't because Intel has been very slow to make improvements to their CPUs lately. Apple has decided that they don't want to be tied to Intel anymore, so they're going to take the same processor that they use for the iPhone and the iPad and put it into the Mac. Thanks for the history lesson, Matt, but what does that mean for video editors whenever it comes to performance? Well, allow me to speculate here for a second and tell you what I think we're going to see. Because Apple Silicon is powerful while being efficient, you can expect faster video editing coupled with dramatically better battery life. Remember how I said that the iPad's latest processor rivals Intel's? It does that while sitting inside a super thin slab of metal that is mostly screen without a fan. Now imagine putting that same processor into a MacBook Pro size chassis with fans and a lot more room to dissipate heat. It's gonna run faster and be more efficient than ever before. Imagine a laptop size battery instead of just an iPad size battery. We're talking all day battery life even while editing 4K video. Also, knowing Apple and their love for thinness, we may actually not see much better battery life, just a much thinner laptop overall. Regardless though, we could be seeing a MacBook Air that can edit 8K raw video without breaking a sweat. I can dream. Now, all that performance sounds great, but let's dial the speculation back a little bit and talk about what we do know. We're now to the second reason why I think Apple Silicon is going to be a big deal for video editors. Support. As in, what apps will actually be supported by this change? The first thing that you need to know is that because Apple is going from Intel to their own Apple Silicon, that means that all apps and basically all software are going to have to be recreated for these new Macs. Yes, everything. All video editing software. If Apple just made this switch out of the blue, Premiere Pro isn't working, DaVinci Resolve isn't gonna work, heck, even Final Cut Pro ain't working. Now that I've terrified you, though, <laughs> I have some good news. When Apple announced Apple Silicon, they also showed a demo of Final Cut Pro working flawlessly with the new hardware. What's more, they showed that Final Cut could play back three streams of 4K video with a color grade and other effects applied perfectly smoothly. There was also a reframing effect enabled by Apple's Neural Engine, which is only available with Apple Silicon. Pretty impressive, right? So Final Cut Pro users are now breathing a sigh of relief knowing that their edits can continue as normal. But what about Premiere Pro? Do you want the good news or the bad news first? Good news first. During Apple's presentation, they did show off a software emulator called Rosetta 2, which they said should make current Mac apps that run on Intel CPUs also work with Apple Silicon. This means that in an ideal world, any video editing software like Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve should work on these new Macs. Great news, right? Well, hold on for just a second. History has shown that emulated software is not nearly as fast or responsive as a native app. So we don't know how well a video editing app will run emulated on Rosetta 2. It is probably gonna end up being slower and less responsive than a native app. I'm sorry that I'm taking you on this emotional roller coaster of good news than bad news. Don't worry, we're going back up to the good news now. Apple said in their presentation that Adobe is working on bringing their entire suite of Creative Cloud apps to work with Apple Silicon. Apple even demonstrated working versions of Photoshop and Lightroom running very smoothly. Back downhill now, and here's the bad news. And I'll admit that this bad news is partially because I'm skeptical about Adobe's software practices. There was no demo of Premiere Pro or After Effects or anything else by Adobe at Apple's event. 
Also, going from Apple's demos, there's no way to tell if the Lightroom and Photoshop they showed were the exact same versions with all the features and capabilities currently available on existing Macs. Look at Adobe's launch of the full version of Photoshop running on the iPad, and you may start to understand why I'm skeptical about Adobe software running well on Macs with Apple Silicon. The iPad version of Photoshop launched without raw photo support. It lacked many of the effects that photo editors rely on when using the desktop version of Photoshop, and reviewers ran from saying it isn't great at best to it's barely usable at worst. My worry is that we're going to see Macs with Apple Silicon inside that are running a stripped down version of Premiere Pro and After Effects. If that happens, it could be years before Adobe adds all the features back in that video editors have come to rely on. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that Adobe is working feverishly right now to bring full featured versions of all of their apps to these new Macs. But considering how many users feel that Adobe is slow to fix bugs and crashes on even their regular versions of Premiere that run on Windows and Mac OS, Apple adding a completely new version of Mac OS that Adobe is going to need to write their programs for an update is not reassuring to me. Lastly, what about DaVinci Resolve or Sony Vegas or any of the other mini video editing apps that are popular out there? Apple didn't mention any of them in their presentation, but I'm hoping that all these companies are working on native apps that will work with Apple Silicon. You can get off the emotional roller coaster now. As you can see, there are some really good looking things that are coming from a support standpoint. There are also some scary things coming from a support standpoint. Those of you that edit on Final Cut Pro are probably going to love these new Macs. For everybody else that edits on a different software, have you considered building your own video editing PC? Wrapping up, I have one last reason that the switch to Apple Silicon is a big deal to video editors. And that third reason is apps. Apps? Matt, you just finished talking about software support. What other apps are you talking about? Appetizers. No, I'm sorry, it's dinner time right now. What I'm talking about are iOS and iPad apps. One of the biggest announcements Apple made is that all iPhone and iPad apps will now run natively on Mac OS. Instead of an iOS app store on your phone and a Mac OS app store on your computer, imagine one unified app store with apps that work across all of your devices. Intrigued? What does this have to do with video editing though? Think about how many video editing apps you use on your phone right now. If you're like me, you probably have a lot. Imagine all of these being available on your Mac as well. Throw a quick color grade on your video using the Visco app. Use Emulsio to stabilize your footage. What video editing iPad app do a lot of people love? LumaFusion. Now imagine it being available on your Mac and ready for you to do all of your editing there instead of any other video editing program. With Apple Silicon, video editors just got access to hundreds if not thousands of video editing apps that are easy to use. This is huge. And two little side predictions here. I am highly betting that these new Macs are going to have a touch screen. You cannot tell me that they're going to bring all of the iOS and iPad apps to a Mac and then make people use a mouse. Second prediction, compatibility goes both ways. Just like how iOS and iPad apps now work on Mac OS, Mac OS apps will now work on iOS and iPad. Can you imagine a Final Cut Pro app on the iPad? Hmm. With that, those are three reasons why Apple's new processors are very interesting for video editors. Between enhanced performance, possibly sketchy support, we'll see, and hundreds if not thousands of new apps available for video editors, this is going to be a really exciting couple of years. Are you excited or nervous about this change? And what video editing software do you use to edit your videos? Please leave me a comment down below and let me know. Also, down below you will find a link to my video editing PC build guides. If all this new Mac stuff is too crazy for you and you want to jump ship from Apple, I will gladly help you do that. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.